as Poirot, yep. they're going to fight. Yes. And I have them in brackets. Yes. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Who would win if... Why, hello, maniacs. Hey, maniacs. <laughs> Welcome to Mystery Maniacs. It's Poirot again. It's Poirot battle. The battle of Poirot. Yes. Who will win? So what we've asked you to do here is, uh, and we're going to discuss the other Poirots. We're just getting this out in the open. Suchet right is the best. He Suchet is the, the best. Grand Emperor of Absolutely. Poirots in, in Plato's cave. If there's a shadow of Poirot on the wall, it is David Suchet casting it. Okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is what we're going to cover. We're going to do what? We are going to rank eight other Poirots who appeared in made-for-TV movies or made-for-screen movies. Yes. And we are going to rank... In English. In English. And we are going to rank them on their mustaches. Yes. Their accents. Yes. Then, best overall Poirot portrayal. And we're going to rank them, and we, we have your rankings. Right. If you we answer have, the dear poll, listeners, then we know we who you like and who you too. don't. And then, we have a special finale. Yes. Absolutely. Right. And again... It's not a song. <laughs> Suchet is the best. Suchet is the don't, best. Don't write us and say, oh, but Suchet is the best. Why you? Okay, he's the best. There's no question. Our, our There's li- no debate. Our listeners don't sound like that. No, it's not people who listen who would sound like that. It's the people who don't listen and saw the poll and went, but Suchet is the best. Yeah, we know. We agree. Go away. By the way, I don't know what's happening on this Instagram, but we're like popular now. Okay. Are you complaining? No. Okay. It's, it's just fantastic. a mystery. We just don't know yeah. why. All right. Are you ready to rumble? I'm ready to rumble. So the people involved in this rumble are Austin Trevor. Yes. Who was in the first adaptations of Poirot for screen, black and white, way back in the 1930s. And, and the, there's and three of them. Black yeah. Coffee, Alibi, Lord, Edgeware, Edgeware, Edgeware dies. Lord Edgeware dies. And then they drug him back for alphabet murders in 65. Oh, they did? Yes. Okay. Okay. Then Tony Randall. Tony Randall in Alphabet Murders. Mm-hmm. Enough said about that. Yep. Albert Finney. Uh, who is in a number, I think he did a number of them. Murder on the Orient Express is the one that he was uh, nominated for an award for. He didn't win, but he was nominated. Yes. Then Peter Ustinoff. Uh, who did Death on the Nile, Evil Under the Sun, and Appointment with Death. Then did three made-for-TV movies, 13 at Dinner, Dead Man's Folly, and Murder in Three Acts. And 13 at Dinner is Lord Edgeware. (laughs) Why do you have problems with that? I don't know. Dies. And those are all uh, in the 80s, mostly. The Death on the Nile was in 78. Yes. Then we have Ian Holm, who is in this strange little made-for-TV movie. Murder by the Book. Which stars Agatha Christie. Not the writer, she's a character. Yeah, it's it, strange. It's very weird. But it has like loose tie-ins to a couple of stories, sort yes, of. Sort uh, of. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Then Alfred Molina. Alfred Molina, 2001 Murder on the Orient Express. Mm-hmm. Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh. Uh, it, is the new Poirot. He's the newest. Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile. Which are called, I didn't know this, but these are called, amongst Poirot people, the sexy Poirots. Ooh la la. Yes, because they have stars in them, like Wonder Woman. And oh, such. so like the whole the whole thing is With sexy. Johnny Depp is it's in It's not it. that the, Poirot is the, sexy. Well, I personally think. Johnny Kenneth, Depp's not. He's always in the first one. He's in now, the first yeah, one, yeah. yes. Kenneth Branagh is. He's a good looking man. I'd say he's probably sexy. Yeah. So. Then there's John Malkovich. There's John Malkovich in ABC Murders, which is a mini series done for BBC. Mm, Netflix too, wasn't it? No. Where did it air here? Britbox. Britbox, okay. I remember we were like, ABC Murders? John Malkovich? Oh. Let's talk about <laughs> mustaches. Okay. Oh, so- now first, oh, we have one more little. Footnote here. One more little prevarication. In addition to Suchet is the best. We know. Yeah. We will be attempting to separate the portrayal of Poirot by the actor from the screenplay adaptation 
of the story. Yes. Because some of these adaptations are weird or great or whatever, but we're not going to talk too much about that. We're going to talk about how this particular actor played Poirot. Yes. Okay. The portrayal of Poirot. The fact that Alfred Molina's Poirot has cell phones and laptops is inconsequential to our discussion, though I had to mention it. Uh, oh, we'll get there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a decision that the screenwriter and director made, not a decision Alfred Molina made in how no. he was going to portray Poirot. That's no. what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. We're going to try to isolate this as much as possible. Okay. Let's talk mustaches. Okay. The mustache is a prime, it's almost a character yes. in Poirot's story. Yes. Right? It is iconic. His care for the mustache. In the Suchet Poirots, it is part of the logo. Mm -hmm. It's part of the logo in many of these things. Yeah. So it is important to the character. It's used in the in the books. It's used as a way to just to express how fastidious Poirot is. Yes. How proud a person he is, but also that little things are important to him. Yes. And that he is not afraid to stand out. No. Because And I would say it's part of his performativeness. Yes. People make fun of his mustache all the time and he does he never cares. No. Right? So no. it's it's his thing. No. <laughs> okay. Let's do worst mustaches than best mustaches. Okay. Okay. So Obviously, Austin Trevor is the worst. Austin Trevor is the worst because he has no mustache. No mustache. Now, his Hastings does. Yes. His Hastings looks like Poirot. He's a short little dumpy guy. With a mustache. With a mustache. <laughs> there must have been people who showed up to do that movie who didn't know those people and are like, oh, you're Poirot and you're yes. Hastings. I read several reviews of people watching this who were confused that they thought that the Hastings was Poirot and vice versa because he has How no mustache. How can you do it without the mustache? You I don't know. You, you just can't. Just it's can't. so critical. It's worst. I mean, I don't even know if we should consider him for mustache, but I'm just going to say he's worst. Yeah. Okay. Who's your second worst? For me, and this is going to be controversial. No, everybody's not going to agree on this. No, That's why we're talking no. about it. This is me. But for me, the worst mustache after no mustache mm -hmm. is Malkovich. I agree. It, it's a goatee. It's a goatee. It's not fastidious. No. It's not even waxed. No. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, as an actor, he rejected the idea of wearing a true Poirot mustache. So I completely blame him. Yep. For the mustache, you can't even blame like um, you know a makeup artist. It's his own damn fault that he didn't have the right mustache. Everything I've read about that project is it was weird. Malkovich didn't read any Poirot. Yeah, on purpose. Yeah, he, he had no prior knowledge of the character. No prior knowledge, and he did it willfully. Yep, bad Malkovich. Yeah, bad Malkovich. So we agree on he is the worst actual mustache. Yes, and because he's it's a goatee. Yes. Okay, who's your your third least my, my favorite? Third? is because it is just a mustache mm. is okay okay no my third the third worst is alfred molina i agree why do you like just like it well i think one of our readers one of our listeners summed it up best uh on a comment because we left we said who's the best poirot other poirot who's mm. the worst other poirot and sarah brilliant brilliantly said we should leave an open response for comments. Mm -hmm. And oh boy. Because we, people have stuff to say. We we have people <laughs> who have stuff to say. And one of the very first comments we got, Alfred Molina's mustache is mentioned in these comments. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gina, I'll just say her first name. Alfred Molina's mustache should be ripped off of his face and stomped on. But please don't hurt Mr. Molina. I love him. I just hate his stash. <laughs> I said he had the third worst stash because I think it's not a Poirot stash. It's just Alfred Molina's mustache. Like, it's just an Alfred mustache. It's not a Hercule mustache. And it's it's a 1998 porn stash is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, oh, ugh. 
Mm. I'm not saying he's a bad actor. I'm no, just no. saying the mustache is it's bad. It's a subpar mustache. It is subpar and it's without distinction. Absolutely. It's there's nothing special about it. It's just Alfred's mustache. Which leads me to the next one, which is Peter Ustinov. He's your fourth worst? Yes. Are we gonna do all of them? Or are we just doing we three well worst, do three all better? Them. Oh, because I don't have the other Oh, okay. I don't have okay. the middle two. Okay, so we did we did Molina. So the, now let's move on to the best mustache. The best mustaches. Okay. And let's go from from third best to first best. And remember, Suchet is zero. Absolutely. Okay. He's prototypical Poirot. He's okay. the epitome. Okay. So, number three. Who's your number three best mustache? I'm going to be controversial. Yeah. Brenna. You know what? I like Brenna's stash. I do too. It is. It's different. It it's, has personality. Absolutely. And it takes upkeep. Yes. That's the whole point of Poirot's mustache. Yep is it takes upkeep. It takes effort, and he puts it in, yeah. and that mustache. I'm not so crazy about the little Van Dyke flavor saver thing my Bobby's got below his lip, but the mustache itself is right awesome. Those are chopper handlebars, yeah. and man, I love them. And, uh, you know, if David Suchet's Poirot met Branagh's Poirot, he would say, nice mustache. He would. I think Absolutely. he would. Absolutely. I think, I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. I'm surprised we agree on that. Oh, no, no. I like Brenna's mustache. Okay. Who's your second best mustache? Second best mustache to me will probably be... Wait a minute. You're supposed to have this list I'm already gonna, made. No, I don't. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to say Ian Holm, only because it's so Poirot. It's so Suchet-like. So you're saying Ian Holmes' mustache is good because it looks sort of like Suchet's mustache yeah, looks? Yeah, so it's personality-wise, it's the right size, it has character. I don't like Peter Ustinov's mustache because it's boring. Yeah. And Tony Randall shall not be spoken in a conversation uh, about mustaches. He's got a Salvador Dali mustache. Uh, well, I don't even want to <laughs> mention him. No, I don't want to mention it. My second best is Finney. Albert Finney's mustache. Finney is pretty good. It's waxed and it's sort of the right shape. But for some reason, I think it's a combination of the mustache and hair. He's a little Hitlery. He's a little, it's the eyebrows too. It's the, but I think he has the best stash other than Suchet. If you did a mashup between Finney and, and between Hitler and Poirot, it would be Finney's Poirot. I, I can see that, <laughs> but I still think like Finney has handlebars. Finney has upkeep, fastidiousness. You know, I think he's the best other than Suchet. Uh, my best uh, on my list is Holm, Ian Holm, because yeah. his mustache is so outrageous. Yes, it is like, completely outrageous. It leaves his face. When it, it, when it leaves the space right below his nose, it's yeah. separate from his face. Yes. <laughs> so when it's not waxed, if it was just pr- freshly washed. Yes. I think it would hang, just hang down from right below his nostrils over his lips. Yes. <laughs> I, I can see that. I don't think there's any hair above the corner of his mouth. No. It's, it's all coming from the middle. No. Which feels like an accomplishment. So we were pretty close on those, too. I was torn, though. I kind of wanted to say Branagh had the best mustache, but it's not the best Poirot mustache. So I went with, uh, with oh, Holm. Okay. Okay. Accents. Oh... Boy. Who has the worst? Okay. Again, we have to cover. So on the bottom three, there has to be a couple of things. Tony Randall has no accent that isn't a person pretending to be French. He's like, we oui, wee, oui, ho, ho, baguette. <laughs> he is the worst <laughs> by far. It's like he learned his accent from watching, you know, bad kids cartoons or something. I don't know. And I, ladies and gentlemen. I did this for you. I watched the entire Alfred Molina movie from start to finish. You're nuts. <sighs> Alfred Molina's French accent is there for the first... It's not supposed to be French. It's supposed to be Belgian. Okay. His Belgian accent is there That's for... one of the big mistakes they make. These people don't know the difference between a Belgian accent and a French accent. It's about 30 seconds in, and then it just... It's gone. <gasps> Malkovich never even tries. Malkovich... He m- thinks mumbling... Is a Belgian it, yeah. accent. So so we have the bottom three are definitely... Randall, Molina, and Malkovich. Randall, Molina, and Malkovich. Absolutely. Yeah. There's this awesome review of the ABC murders with Malkovich. He doesn't even sound British. No, <laughs> no. Um, 
At least Molina sounds European. He's American, but he sounds European. So a journalist, Sophie Gilbert, reviewed the ABC murders with John Malkovich for The Atlantic. And she's got this great quote about his accent. Okay. While everyone else is hamming it up, playing monstrous psychopaths on an operatic scale, Malkovich wafts glumly from scene to scene, his facial expressions rarely more animated than someone trying to do long division in their head. Wow. (laughs) Wait, I think that's pretty accurate. Yeah. He just doesn't have any expression, which is weird. Look because like he wants to be there. Because Malkovich is an expressive actor. Yeah. I don't know why he chose to go this path. It's weird. I think he just likes irritating people sometimes. He's, he's weird and not in the good way where Pale Horse with Rufus Sewell oh, yeah, is that's really weird. weird. Yeah. But it was weird in a good way. It was weird. Awesome. At the end of it, I was like, oh my, yes. Mm-hmm. I thought Malkovich had like a lemon drop in his mouth all the time. Yeah. Because he's got this little puckered face and he won't move his lips. No. it's So Randall Molina Malkovich. Yep. And I don't know why Molina did the accent he did. I don't know what he was trying to do. Uh, And he stops halfway through. I don't know if he got bad direction or what. Something. But it falls apart. Okay. Let's talk best accents. Okay. My three best. Okay. Finney is number three. Okay. I would agree with that. Though it's a little Hitler. It's a little Hitler. And we can play a clip right here. Harry Pete. A repulsive murderer has himself been repulsively and perhaps deservedly murdered. He whispers a bit much. Hey, much. It's like he's got some loose lip. There's a weirdness to Like it. a walrusy quality yeah. to it. Then Branagh. Yeah. Because I think Branagh actually studied a Belgian accent. I think so, too. And really tried. Yes, I think so, too. My name is Hercule Poirot, and I am probably the greatest detective in the world. And then, but I think the best is Peter Ustinov. Peter Ustinov is the voice of Poirot before Suchet. Yes. In my head. Yeah, me too. I mean, he's who I grew up with. Yeah. Uh, as, until I saw Suchet, you know, yeah. I was like, oh, that's what Poirot sounds like. Yeah. When I read the books, I heard Peter Ustinov. I would agree. So I might be biased. Yep. Wow, we had the same top three? Yep. We got to disagree a little bit. Oh, when, when we get to the end here. We'll okay. Get, we'll get okay. to the So that's mustache and accent. Are you ready to rank them overall? So this is the best? overall, and we're going to include your votes in this. This is how true to the character in some way, yes. however you want to define that, Yes. the actor was. Who is the worst so, so we're going to well, do the who's over- your third worst. We're going to do the overall portrayal of the actors. How true are they to Poirot? Yep. To the the essence. And we're going to go third worst, second worst, worst. Okay. And then we're going to go third, third best, best, second, second best, best, first. First. Okay. So the third worst on my list is yeah. Malkovich. The third worst on my list is Austin Trevor. I I, I chose Malkovich for all the reasons I just said. I don't. Austin Trevor is, he's a dandy in those Mm. movies and not in the way that Poirot is a dandy. Yeah. He's more like, I think he almost wanted to be, the portrayal fits more with- Lord Peter Whimsy? It's more Lord Peter Whimsy than it is Poirot. And his Hastings is just dumb. He runs into a wall. Yeah, his Hastings is an idiot and his Jap is horrendous. So I put Trevor at number seven out of eight. Okay. So he's my next worst. Okay. So b- before we get to the next worst, let's let's see what our audience said was the their their third worst with twenty four percent was Tony Randall. They like him a lot more than we do. <laughs> Needless to say, he's the worst worst as far as I'm concerned. But oh. wow. Ooh. Okay. Either they haven't seen him or they're just thinking, well, he's a little funny. I'll give him a little credit. Well, I, <laughs> when I read that Agatha Christie didn't want that movie to be made. No, really? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's totally a response to, like, carry-on movies almost. Yeah, it's it's nothing like no. anything Christie no. ever wrote. No. Okay, number two. The wor- second worst? Second worst. I have Trevor. I have Alfred Molina. I realize. Oh. I realize. He's your second worst? You, you have to watch that entire movie because not only, like, like cell phones and computers aside, Lord, <laughs> that was tough to separate. 
He doesn't think like Poirot. Mm. And I don't like that. Yeah. He it is far more like a police procedural. Yes. They could have named him Bob Smith and and said it was a story inspired by the Orient Express and, written by Agatha Christie. And I got to tell and you, it would have been fine. I have such high hopes for Alfred Molina as Inspector Gamache. Yeah, I do too. And the Three Pines by yeah, Louise Penny. Three yeah. Pines is coming out soon. It's in post production. Yeah, Alfred Molina's got the glasses. I, I think he'll be really good. I'm at that. super excited for that because I read one of the books and you've read all of the books at and, least once. Yeah. yeah. It, it's super exciting, but I just think he flew in, did the role, and was out. Yeah, I think he's a victim. Uh, I can see that of too. Of a bad script. It's a bad script. It's a bad production. They tried to. I they just, decided to to modernize Murder on the Orient Express. Yeah. And take it to an an age when people didn't ride trains like that anymore. So yeah. it just it's anachronistic. Oh. It, I, when I was watching it, I was texting Sarah, and there were many moments of screaming. And I don't think he could. I see. I'm giving him a bit of credit. I don't think he could have done any better than he did with that bad of a script. So see, I can't. I can't do that. Do we him. agree on the worst? Or okay. well, who, who's the listeners? Who they put in at number seven? The listeners for number seven with twenty six point seven percent of the vote. Kenneth Brown. Whoa! Boom, baby. He's way down there. Yeah. Now, there might be some people who put him way up there, too. Yeah, there's no rules here. There's no, It's not right? single elimination no, or anything. No, not, like that. not for the listener rankings. No. Wow, they don't like him, huh? A quarter yeah. of them don't like yeah, him. Yeah, a quarter. Wow. Really, the top, the bottom three are over 75% of the votes. Wow. It's pretty unanimous who they don't like. Well, Randall's at the bottom. I'm sorry. For me, I, I will accept no Randall other argument. is at the bottom. There is a bowling scene in that movie. He goes googly-eyed over oh, go-go girls. I mean, it's just, it's right out. He bowls. Poirot does not bowl. No, he would never do that. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Ever. No. Never mind, turn his back with two bowling balls and throw strikes. He's not superhuman. It's stupid. Oh. It's a parody. Uh, it's not even a and parody. And it's not even a good parody. No, no. Parody is what in the Spice World movie <laughs> that Hugh Laurie did a parody of Poirot in that movie. It's a little tiny 40 yeah. second scene. We didn't include it. Include it. He's not labeled Poirot. But he's clearly a parody of Poirot. Yeah. And that is a better parody than the entire, the entire Tom Randall movie. Entire ABC murder. And movie. remember, listeners, remember we on a regular episode, have a little section called Horrible Movies I Bet Mark Has Seen. So yes, he has watched Spice World. Yes. <laughs> Spice World has a lot of good people. It does. It? it has a ton of good people. Yep. I mean, um, uh, Stephen Fry's Stephen in Fry's it. Stephen Fry's yeah. in it. Richard E. Grant. Richard E. Grant yep. is in it. Okay. Let's talk about best. Okay. Well. The, oh, who's the the listener's absolute worst? Listener's absolute worst with 27.5% of the vote, John Malkovich. So they dislike Malkovich more than Branagh. Yep. Okay. I'm thinking maybe people don't like modern remakes. They don't like new stuff. I think that that's a possibility. Which I understand. Yep. When you've got Suchet out there, why watch anything else? Yeah. I understand that. I understand that. Let's go best. Okay, best. So number three. My number three? Yeah. Is Branagh. My number three? Albert Finney. I like Branagh because he has style and like panache. Absolutely. He's fastidious. Yep. He's obviously extremely intellectual. He yep. has that little sparkle in his eye. And his Poirot is, though he is surrounded by glamorous people, he is removed from them. Yes. As he is supposed to be. I like Albert Finney because I think he was trying to be Poirot from the books. It's obvious he's trying to be. Some of them, you're like, have you read the books? Mm -hmm. But he, he obviously loves the material and is trying to be Poirot from the book. See, and I feel the same way about Branagh. I think Branagh really likes Poirot. He just didn't think he needed to do Tall Suchet, which is what he would have been if he tried to be absolutely accurate Visually, especially. Yeah. But I think what he did is still very true to the character. Okay. We'll get there. 
Who do the listeners like third? The listeners third. They for their number three spot with fifteen point six percent of the vote is Brenna. They agree with me. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Second best for me. Second best is Peter Ustinov. I can see that. He's he is the character. I don't like the mustache, but he gets the mannerisms. He gets the voice right. He gets. He gets the stories right. I think he's a bit too rough around the edges. Yeah. He's like Poirot's messy brother. Yes. <laughs> you know, like uh, like Sherlock and his brother, like whose name is what? What's simple, Sherlock Holmes's brother's name? Mycroft. Mycroft, Simple yes. things. When in Death in the Nile, when they go to the tomb... Poirot in Suchet is wearing gloves. Yes. Brenna is wearing gloves. Yep. Ustinov is not wearing gloves. Because Ustinov's Poirot is willing to get his hands a little dirty. Yeah. The other two know he would not. Yeah. But I have, who whose listeners have second? So the listeners second have Albert Finney. Okay. My number one is Ustinov. Okay. So your number one is Ustinov. I have a soft spot for him. For I'm, the reasons we've already mentioned. I understand, and I can believe that I have recent regency recency bias, mm-hmm. but I think Brenna is the best other Poirot. I can understand that he is. Well, first of all, like the mustache is fantastic. Yes, the backstory makes sense. Yes, it's Unlike different Malkovich's than the book. Malkovich's oh. backstory makes no sense at no, all. No, right? He is a gentleman. Mm-hmm. Uh, Malkovich is a pensioner. Yeah. He he is he is a gentleman detective and I also think more than the other two Brenna is the smartest looking one of them. All. <laughs> like he looks yeah, he has he, that he intelligent looks intelligent. And you're right. He has that sparkle, mm-hmm. that fun, mm-hmm. that Ustinov has it and Finney sort of has it, but not as much as Brenna. Yeah. He I is, agree. And it's tough because Brenna is the superior actor out of all these people. Yeah. Right? Like, but that to me, it's Brenna. It's difficult for me to say Brenna is the best because I can't quite separate his Poirot from the rest of the production of those I shows. Understand that. Because those movies are so beautiful and the other actors are so good yeah. that that lends a little shine to his Poirot, I think, um, that I shouldn't attribute to him, but I have trouble not attributing now, to him. there's a thing with Brana that I wanted to talk about on here. Mm-hmm. So there's a third movie. Mm-hmm. They haven't announced what it is. Okay. So they've done Orient Express. They've done Death on the Nile. What do you want them to do in the third movie of all Poirot's cases? Oh, that's hard. That's really tough. Not ABC Murders. See, I love ABC I Murders. I do too, but I think I, it's been done. It's I, just done. I love ABC Murders, but I don't know if they could, if so close to the Malkovich one, yeah. I don't know if they would do it. Not not Death on the, uh, not Evil Under the Sun. I don't want them to do Sad Cypress. No. What I think he's going to Appointment do, with Death would be good. Appointment with Death would be good, but I believe the third movie will be Five Little Piggies. Because mm. he'll get all those actors, those yeah. top notch actors, yeah. doing their version of the stories. Yeah. And I think it's going to be Five Little Piggies. I, that would be really good. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Are you ready for this? So, the, and the, then the. Oh, who did the listeners the like? Listeners the listeners liked Peter Ustinoff the most. So they're kind of divided on Brano. Yeah. You either like him or you don't. But 50, over 50% pick Peter Easton. Which, which I understand. I understand completely. He's good. Yeah, he's, he's good. He's totally watchable. You can still watch him. You cannot watch Alfred Molina. You cannot watch Tony Randall. No. You cannot watch Austin Trevor. I have seen the Malkovich one time. That's all I will see it. I could not. Like the Malkovich, I started watching it again, and it was just frustrating. Yeah. And in the Malkovich one, I noticed that this time, he doesn't show up till halfway through the first episode. No. It's like he doesn't want to be there. Yeah. And frankly, I just, I know we said we weren't going to judge them on it, but I don't like what they did with the rest of the story. I don't like that the landlady is prostituting her daughter. No. I don't like the gross, like, big pussy boil and egg montage. No, I, I just don't like, it's just too nasty. 
That's not the world of Agatha Christie. No. It's never gross. No. It's never dirty. And now, Poirot. people may be mentally very dirty. Yeah. But that's the whole point of Christie. It's polished country house full of people who look polished and inside are broken. Yeah. Right? That's the whole point. And that's, see, that's why I think he might do Five Little Piggies next. Because mm-hmm. that is the essence of Five Little Piggies. Yeah. It's five people in a house who are not telling each other the truth. Yeah. I think that would be really good. I think that's a good suggestion. Yeah. If he's listening, that's he, what he should do. Brian, I'll okay. get him on the phone. Our finale. Okay. Bum, bum, Poirot battle. Okay, so we're going to do Poirot battle. So this is... Fight! Who? <laughs> In a fight? They're actually going as to fight. Po- as Poirot. This is physical altercation. As Poirot, yep. they're going to fight. Yes. And I have them in brackets. Yes. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Who would win if Austin Trevor's Poirot fought Tony Randall's Poirot? Ooh. I'm, go- I'm going to go... I'm, I'm going to say that Tony Randall's Poirot is such a coward that I'm going to go Austin Trevor. Me too. Because I think Tony Randall would f- would run away. Yeah. That's the whole point of the carry on. And by the way, of- Suchet is the, the referee for the Suchet is, is the Caesar in the stands yeah. who says, Thumbs fight. Up. That's right. Thumbs up. And He's thumb up thumb. there in his, in his robes and his fig leaves. 32 times fight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. So we think Trevor wins the first heat. All right. Okay. Who would win in a fight between Albert Finney's Poirot and Peter Ustinov's Poirot. Oh, well, I got to think Peter Ustinov has a little bit of reach mm. and a little bit of weight on him. Mm-hmm. So I'm and and but the, Finney's wily. Finney's wily, but he's I think, skulky. I think Ustinov would fight dirty. Yeah. Yeah. And have no problem fighting dirty. So I'm going Ustinov. I think if they were fighting and Finney looked like he was winning, people would throw stuff at him and help Ustinov out. <laughs> I think so. I think the crowd would be on his side. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so so I agree. Peter Ustinov wins his heat. Okay. Okay. Who would win in a fight between Ian Holmes Poirot and Alfred Molina's Poirot? Now, remember, Ian Holmes is actually Pennywise Poirot. Yes. And (laughs) you'll see the clip. I've even given him a balloon because he's so creepy. (laughs) He he is crazy creepy. He's super creepy. And Molina is so, he's he's yuppie Poirot. He is. That is what he is. Yes. He's yuppie Poirot. If Poirot was an Italian policeman in the 90s, in it, the would t- be, it, it would yeah. be Alfred Molina's in Poirot. In the late 90s. He yeah. wears a trench coat, for God's sake. Oh. <laughs> so who's going to win in a fight? I'm, I'm going to go Molina because he's taller and he's got more reach. Oh, no. But Ian Holm would be like on his back like yeah, a monkey. I, I know that, but I think Molina would still win. You like Molina because he was Doc Ock. I do. He, he, those arms could still come out of nowhere. But Ian Holm was a hobbit. That's true. Ian Holm was a hobbit. <laughs> I'm I'm choosing Holm. Okay. I'm I'm gonna uh, outvote you here. Okay. okay. Who wins between Brana and Malkovich? Wow. Because like I've seen Brana in action movies, mm-hmm. and I've seen certainly Malkovich. Those are the two top contenders. They're. They, they like they should have drawn Molina and Holmes. They're the instead. heavyweights. Yeah, they're that's the, why they have to fight each other. Uh, they should, you should have seeded this properly. <laughs> no, I did. I paired them up with with opponents that had a good match for well, them. No, the first round. I'm not going to rig it. The first round you play an easy match. Uh, just pick Branagh or Malkovich. Now remember, it's their Poirots. Yeah. Branos kicks Malkovich I'm, seven days a week. Seven days a week. Because Malkovich's yeah. Poirot is old. He's he, dirty. He's he doesn't depressed. Move. He's he doesn't. Sad. He, he he just gonna shamble around. Yep. Scuff his feet around. Branos gonna put on a glove and punch him. No, in the no. Face. Branos gonna get out a silver tipped cane and knock his feet out from underneath him and just stand on him and go. Yeah. I'm the winner. Yeah. Okay. So Brano wins. Okay. okay. So that leaves who against who? Now wins? we have the second round. Okay. Trevor versus Ustinov. Oh, Ustinov beats Trevor all I agree. over the place. I agree. All over the Home place. versus Branagh. So I think Branagh beats home. Me too. Okay, Ustinov versus Branagh. See, this is why my brackets make sense. Now you have the top contenders. I think of those two, I still think Branagh would win over Ustinov. I, I think that Branagh would be overly flamboyant. He would. 
he would show off, and while he was showing off, Yusinov would knock his ass out. That, that, I, I can accept that as an answer. Or he would take off his ginormous jacket <laughs> and blind him with it. Because Yusinov was a big dude. Yeah. <laughs> he was a big dude. So the winner in the Poirot battle to the death is Peter Yusinov. Yes. Brenna was a close second. Honorable mention. So, folks, that covers our first month of Mystery Maniacs. Yes. And now we're moving on to Father Brown. Father Brown, starting with season one, episode the, one. The Hammer of God. Yes. So C.K. Chesterton's kind of been hot lately because uh, a reference in Sandman to yeah. C.K. Chesterton. So Chesterton. Chesterton. Ten. But I got to say... And I was just thinking about this. The Father Brown we're covering, so we're covering the 2013 to present mm -hmm. television show, is the most non-Catholic, woke Catholic <laughs> priest ever. He's not nearly as judgy. <laughs> no, no, Father Brown in the store, like Father Brown in the Potato Vision 80s version yeah. was judgy. Yes. But not super judgy. Yeah. He was Catholic. Eh. The new Father Brown is Catholic light. Yes. But in the stories, he's Catholic. Yes. <laughs> well, the, the stories are a response to Sherlock Holmes. Yes. And his Protestantism. Right. So, so we will have, uh, I think, uh, somebody falling from a church. Yes. Uh, but we will not see Mark What's-His-Face's butt. I'm sorry. If you want to no. see his butt, if you want to see Father Brown's butt, you got to go back to Midsummer. You got to go back to Midsummer. So our next episode will be September 12th. Uh, Father Brown, Hammer of God. So watch, go ahead and watch it. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and email. And thank you for all of the love that we've been getting. It's just fantastic. We are overjoyed. Super fun. There will be merch in September. Yep. And I think, uh, so we're doing a month of Father Brown, and then we get to October, and it's spooky. spooky. We're going to cover Halloween episodes, some of our favorite Halloween episodes. Then we're going to do um, Jonathan, Creek. Jonathan Creek in November, November. and then Christmas, Christmas episodes stuff. in December. Yep. So if there's a um, British mystery TV show that you think has a great Christmas episode, let us know. Well, we'll do a poll for Halloween episodes and Christmas episodes. Yeah, be thinking about that. We'll do spooky we'll do, episodes. We'll do, and we'll do, there's three episodes in that month because, mm -hmm. by the way, Halloween's a kind of crazy time for us. Yeah. So there's only three episodes in that month. We'll do my pick, your pick, and then the listener, the pick. listener pick. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Until then, you start off is second best. Poirot. Rules. Suchet rules. Yeah. Yusinov is like, I rule. <laughs> anyway. Bye, it's been fun doing Poirot. <laughs> bye, maniacs. Bye, maniacs. Lord, Edgeware, Edgeware, Edgeware dies. Lord Edward die. Lord Edwater. Lord Edgewater. Where? Austin Trevor's Prowler. Prowler. Uh.